Jesus is in the storms of our life. If you have been a Christian for any length of time, you have faced many storms. And without the awareness that Jesus Christ is with us, we can sometimes fall prey to those storms and think like they're going to overtake us. Like we're never going to make it through this. Like we're either going to die or we're just going to cave under the pressure and never be able to live life again. Well, I want to encourage you today, friends, that that is not the case. As followers of Jesus Christ, we have the ultimate solution. We have God's word and we have the Holy Spirit who lives on the inside of us to help us through every single storm that we will ever face. I'm going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verses 3 through 5. It says, oh, and I'm going to read it out of the amplified version. Starting in verse 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 3, it says, Blessed, grateful, praised, and adored be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies and the God of all comfort, who comforts and encourages us in every trouble, so that we will be able to comfort and encourage those who are in any kind of trouble with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. Verse 5, for just as Christ's sufferings are ours in abundance as they overflow to his followers, so also our comfort, our reassurance, our encouragement, our consolation is abundant through Christ. It is truly more than enough to endure what we must. Amen. My name is Michelle, and if you're new here, what you will find here is biblical encouragement that encourages you to grow and mature in your own relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you come here all the time, I just want to thank you for allowing me to speak biblical truth into your life. Today, we're going to talk about how the Lord comforts us in our storms, in our trials, so that we can then comfort those who are in need of God's comfort, of God's grace, of God's love, and of God's mercy. So I hope you stick around to hear that. All right, let's get to it. Friends, listen, we know that we cannot deny pain in our life Pain is very real. Trials, difficulties, hardships, heartaches, it's all very real. So just saying that, oh, I feel great and nothing's going on and not really acknowledging that there is pain, that there is trouble, that there are trials happening right now. We don't need to focus on those trials, but we definitely need to focus on what it is that the Lord tells us to do in these storms. He tells us to comfort those with the same comfort that we have received. When we are in the word, when we are allowing the Holy Spirit to guide us and direct us, the Lord is comforting us. He's comforting us with his word, with his presence, with his answer to prayers. Listen, Satan will do whatever he can to wreck God's plan in our life, okay? If we allow Satan to wreck the plans that God has for our life, we're not going to live the life that God created us for. That is Satan's whole plan. That's it. He is there to distract you from God's plan, to frustrate you, to get you off the path, to get you into unbelief and doubt. If he can keep you from fulfilling God's plan in your life, he wins. He wins. So I just want you to be aware of the enemy's schemes. Don't focus on them. Don't allow him, them to overcome you, but simply be aware of them. Okay? And when we're aware of them, we can begin to get real honest and just real with God. I mean, our heart's desire should be to just have a real, vibrant, live, 
active, tangible relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And when we do that, the enemy, he is not going to win. Okay. The, the battles are there, whether we acknowledge them or not. I say it's better to acknowledge that we're going through a battle. Don't sit there and dwell on it and complain about it and tell everybody about it. But just be aware and acknowledge that you are in a battle and you need to take it to the Lord because our battles start off first and foremost as spiritual battles. There is a spiritual battle going on in the heavenlies. And so, therefore, we are up against the spiritual forces and principalities of the heavenly realm. I don't want to get too deep into that because that's not what my message is about. But we have to understand that we have an enemy and he's here to derail us from the plan that God has for us. And he creates all of these battles so that we will just take our eyes off the Lord and get distracted by fighting them which is not what we're called to do. The word says that the battle belongs to the Lord, okay? Jesus can and will calm the storms of our life when we allow him to oversee every area of our life. Listen, if you're in a storm right now in your relationships, then you need to be praying about your relationships. You need to be asking the Lord to be intervening in those relationships, to be softening hearts, to be giving peace that passes understanding. You need to pray for restoration and let God do the heavy work. If you're having a storm right now with your health, then you need to declare God's healing truths over your life that God healed us at the cross that on the cross, he paid our sin debt in full and therefore he paid for our health. He paid for our wholeness. So we just need to pray, speak the word of truth over us, over ourselves and allow God again to do the heavy lifting by making those storms in our life almost evaporate, right? And if you're having financial problems, or parenting problems. I mean, whatever storms that you feel like you're in, give them to the Lord. Cast your anxieties on the Lord because he cares for you. And we find that in 1 Peter 5. 1 Peter chapter 5, it tells us to cast our cares on the Lord because he cares for us. And so he does the hard work battling these storms for us. And he comforts us in these storms so that we can comfort others when they go through their storms. I believe there's always somebody that God puts in our life to comfort us and there's always somebody he puts in our lives for us to comfort. So I want you to just minister to others out of what God is ministering to you, okay? That is when we are living the call that God has on our life. When we are allowing God to work in our hearts, when we're allowing him to fill us up, when we're allowing him to restore us, and we're actually living out the word of God, and we are pouring that, that wisdom, that comfort, that knowledge, that grace, that mercy, that love into other people's lives, then we are doing the will of God. We are all called to share the gospel of Jesus Christ, okay? And we're all called to share all of Jesus with those around us. So I hope that we're encourages you today to not let the enemy sidetrack you. Don't let the enemy beat you down so badly that you cannot even lift your head, that you cannot even speak the words out your mouth, Jesus, help me. And if you are in that place, friend, then I want you to simply say, Jesus, help me. And just pray that he would send people into your life to help you weather the storm, to comfort you, and to bring restoration. Amen. Amen. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for your word, Lord. We thank you that you love us with an unfailing love 
that you care about every single thing in our life. And Lord, we know that your word says that we are to cast our cares on you. The things that we worry about, the things that we're frustrated about, the things that we're irritated about, the things that we're battling, and you will care for us. Lord, we just thank you and praise you so much. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, take care. I hope that word encourages you. If you're not subscribed to this channel, I please just ask you to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss an encouraging word for Wednesday. All right, take care. God bless.